Set builder notation is a really handy way of describing sets. It characterizes all elements in a set by stating the property or properties that elements must have to be in the set. So you use set brackets, and then there's a vertical line splitting it into two halves. Sometimes two dots are used instead. On the left, we generally specify the universe that elements in the set come from, like the naturals or the reals or the rationals. Or we might just give the general form of an element of the set, like 2k or n squared. And then to the right of the line, we state any additional property or properties these elements must have to be in the set. So let's do a few examples of taking a description or some known set and turning it into set builder notation. And then we'll go the other way, taking set builder notation and turning it into a set in roster form, where we just list out the elements. Beginning with the set of primes, we'll start by opening up our set bracket. Then let's describe the universe that the primes come from. I might say these are the elements P that are natural numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And then I'll use a vertical line, and to the right of this vertical line, I have to state the additional property that a number must have to belong to the set of primes. That additional property is that P has to have exactly two factors. So this is the set of all natural numbers P where p has exactly two factors. That is precisely the set of prime numbers. This set doesn't contain negative one, for example, because negative one is not a natural number. This set doesn't contain six, for example, because six has four factors, which is not exactly two. Next, how would we write the closed interval from zero to one using set builder notation? Well, let's start with our set brackets and then we'll describe the universe the elements of this set come from. In this case, I would just say x has to be a real number. And then I'll use a vertical line and specify what else has to be true about x for it to be in this set. Well, we're trying to describe the closed interval from 0 to 1. So that's all numbers between 0 and 1, including the endpoints. So I would just say that x has to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. So this set contains all real numbers that are between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1, which is precisely this closed interval. What about this set, the multiples of 5 from 0 to 15? For this one, it might be more convenient to begin by describing the general form of our elements. The general form of our elements is 5k, because these are multiples of 5. But to really capture everything that's in this set, we need to be a little bit more specific about k. So let's state the additional properties. First, k has got to be an integer. Otherwise, we're not actually talking about multiples of 5. We could be talking about 5 thirds and 5 sixths. No, k has to be an integer. But also, we don't want all multiples of 5. We only want a few of them. So k actually has to range from 0 to 3. That's going to produce precisely the multiples of 5 we want. So 0 is less than k, is less than 3, except I need to use non-strict inequalities. k could equal 0 to give us that element, and k could equal 3, so we get that element. So this is the set of all numbers 5k, where k is an integer that's between 0 and 3, including the endpoints. This is precisely this set, 0, 5, 10, and 15. Lastly, how would we write the set of positive squares using set builder notation? In this example, it would again probably be more convenient to write the general form of these elements on the left. So I'll write that as n squared. This way, it's very convenient to just say this is a set containing squares. Now, which squares in particular? the positive ones. So I want to say that n must be a natural number. That way we don't get zero, which is a square number that's not positive. So this is a set containing all squared integers, which is all of the positive squares. Next, let's take a few sets in set builder notation and write them in roster notation. So this is the set containing all real numbers x, such that x squared is one. That's the set containing 1 and negative 1. Those are the only two elements satisfying all conditions. The next set contains all numbers n squared, where n is a natural, 
and n is less than 100. The first natural number is 1, so this set would contain 1 squared. It would also contain 2 squared, and 3 squared, and so on, all the way up through, well, n is a natural number, and it has to be less than 100, so all the way up through 99 squared, which is 9,801. And then I can close my set brackets. So here I list a few elements of the set, so you can see that it's the square numbers, and then just go all the way up until the final square that I want included, which is 9,801. The next square number is when n equals 100, and we square that, but that does not belong in this set. This next example is the set containing 3k, where k is an integer. So this is just all multiples of 3. In order to capture this, I need the negative and the non-negative multiples of 3. So I'll start with dot dot dot, and then negative 9, negative 6, negative 3, 0. So this suggests that we're taking multiples of 3 forever, going in the negative direction. But then I also need to capture the positive multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, dot, dot, dot. So this makes the pattern clear and makes it clear that we're going all the way to the negative direction and to the positive direction. This is the set containing all multiples of 3. Our final example is the set containing all characters alpha, where alpha is an English vowel. So this is just a non-mathy example, which is perfectly fine. Set builder notation is useful for describing all sorts of things. The English vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. So this would be the set containing A, E, I, O, and U. We name the arbitrary representative here alpha because, of course, the set is talking about English vowels, so it would be confusing to give an English vowel name to the general representative. Remember, in some of these sets, we give the general form of an element. In other sets, we give the universe that the elements come from. Either one is fine. Just make an intelligent choice about what works most easily for the set you're trying to describe. For example, when we try to write the set of positive squares, if I don't give n squared as the general form of my element on the left side, then I would have to capture that in some way on the right side. I could do that by just writing that n is a square, or I could write that the square root of n is an integer but it's more convenient to just write n squared on the left. So that's a little bit about set builder notation and how to read it and how to use it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my discrete math course and discrete math exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent. Dom Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.